At the age of 22, McElroy became the youngest US Open winner since Bobby Jones in 1923. This is also the time when he had a full bag of tightless clubs before he eventually moved on to Nike and then Taylor Made. However, what I want to find out before he finished a 16 under total at the Congressional, eight shots ahead of Jason Day, how much would it cost you nine years later to build a complete replica of his bag in second hand clubs? Well, in today's video, that is exactly what we're going to have a look at. Uh, I've got the 910D2 in the bag. Um, it is with a, with a Fujikura run back shaft. So my first goal was to find out exactly what Rory had in his bag. And I found this YouTube video on Golf Monthly's YouTube channel, as well as a link to their website that gave me a full list of all the clubs. And not only that, but the shaft specifications as well, because I want to make this list as comprehensive as I possibly can. Because if McElroy can shoot 16 under over four days with these clubs, then they can't be that bad. Or we might say it could be down to the user. Now, looking at the driver first, I wanted to find the exact head. We're talking eight and a half degree, which he even lofted down to 7.75 whilst playing at the Congressional. And not only that, I needed to find the exact same shaft he was using as well, which can prove quite challenging. Now, the only club that I found currently on eBay was that dodgy looking one that you saw earlier, but there's quite a few of them listed that had been sold in the past. So to be honest, this challenge is gonna involve a bit of time if you were to actually build this yourself. It's not a case of going online and just ordering it from American Golf. I then wanted to find the exact same shaft that he had in his driver as well, which was the Rombux. This took a bit of time to actually find and I had to do a bit of research. Now I didn't know what the shaft looked like, but looking from the graphics, it looked all black. And when I finally came across this link with a South African sticker that had Charles Swartzel all over it, I found in the description when looking through this shaft, not only did Charles Swartzel use this shaft, but so did Rory McIlroy. So I knew I was on the right lines. Therefore, looking at the driver, I knew that I could probably get a decent eight and a half head for about 30 to 35 pounds, and then the shaft for about 95 pounds, totaling about 120 pounds for the driver. Now I knew the fairways would prove a very similar challenge to the driver. Finding and locating the heads wouldn't be as challenging as finding the exact aftermarket or tour shafts, especially as I don't know what these shafts look like. So I had to do quite a bit of research to get the ins and outs. Now, there are tons of 906 F2 fairway wood heads out there, but trying to find McElroy's 13 and a half degree three wood one was quite difficult. I found a few F4s, I found a few 15 degree heads, F2s, but finding the exact replica was quite challenging. However, I don't think it would be that expensive to actually buy if one was to come on the market. And I looked on quite a few completed and sales, and there are or have been a few out there, and they're all ranging at about 30 to 35 pounds. Now, the Project X shaft and the Zcom shaft took a bit of time to locate, especially as I didn't know what they looked like. But looking through a lot of different websites and a lot of different diagrams, I did realize the three wood shaft that he had at the US Open was in fact blue, which makes sense as all the Project X shafts that I looked for that were a fairway wood for its time was blue as well. So I was pretty certain that the Project X shaft that I found for about $60 was about correct. Now the Zcom shaft again, very difficult to find and I found tons of driver shafts but not many fairway wood shafts until finally after a bit of research I found this pulled 43 inch Zcom X stiff shaft which is going to be quite similar and as I said it's just black just like the ones in the pictures of McElroy's bag so I'm totaling both the fairway woods at about 150 quid and that's more down to the time and effort of finding them than that actual value if you were so keen to build their exact fairway woods from that round. Now moving on to the most generic or easiest set makeup I could find out of this whole bag, the 710 MBIs. Well that's what I thought, seeing as a 6.5 Project X shaft in an MB is quite a common setup. That being said, there's not many of them out on the market now, mainly because anyone that had an MB iron or anyone that uses an MB iron to date normally practices on a grass range. And that is why you see these wear marks on any of the decent sets that I found. Now this set was a bid at about 73 pounds. I imagine they'd probably go for about 120 to 140 in great condition. But it's again, just trying to find a decent set that hasn't been worn completely out. 
is going to be more of the challenge than finding the irons themselves and as if you needed to you could pull the heads and put some new 6.5 rifle shafts in them but that being said I valued the irons uh, about 120 pounds in total depending on what kind of condition you could get for them because he didn't even use the pitching wedge in the set he just had three to nine iron and he had wedges from then on out which is exactly what we're going to have a look at now McElroy had three wedges in his bag with Project X 6.5 shafts again in them just like his irons and dating them proved a bit more challenging. Now, as far as I'm aware, back in 2010 when the wedge conforming ruling came out in terms of V grooves and U grooves, even though it wasn't instilled on the PJ Tour, it was said that the Open Championships or the Majors had to have conforming wedges. Looking back through the videotapes, looking at the Vokies that he was using, they didn't have the red circular saw, which was the old grooves. He had a very neutral looking saw around the bottom of the Vokie. And unfortunately, like the SM4, SM5, SM6, and so on, it makes it a lot easier to date those wedges, unlike his. So I went through tons of photos again, and Bob Vokey himself made a set replicas of gold plated Vokey wedges for McRoy after the win. This gave me the best look I possibly could have at these wedges to get an idea of what kind of wedges he was using at the time. And it confused me because each wedge had a completely different design on the back of them, making them very unique. Some of them had spin milled, some of them had spin milled C.C. And again, I was trying to date them. However, I came to a conclusion. If you were to build these wedges to date and you wanted to get as close as you possibly can and you wanted to use these on the range, you're going to have to have conforming regardless. Therefore, I went in search for some SM3 wedge heads. 48 degree, 54 and a 60 degree and all of them were varying from 30 pounds again all down to condition. The wedge is only as good as its head. Therefore, trying to value his wedges, you're looking at about £30 for a wedge shaft and £30 for an SM3 head. That being said, you could probably get an SM4, SM5, SM6 for a very similar price. So I'd probably just go for the upgrade, but that's as close as I could get with them. Going through the research into the Scotty Cameron Studio Select Newport GSS prototype for McRoy, for the 2011 congressional win was the most interesting and exciting part of this whole video, mainly because I learned a hell of a lot. GSS stands for German Stainless Steel, which coming down to Cameron and Company is the best steel or best material you can possibly use for a putter head. That being said, it's so expensive to produce that will never come to mass market just because they can't charge the money that it deserves when being sold. Therefore, these putters are one of a kind. These putters are designed for tour players and tour players only. So I went on a search. Can you find GSS putters? Yes, you can. You can find a lot of them. There are a lot of them out there on the market. However, there's nothing anywhere near to what McElroy was using at the time. So rather than just ending this video on a rather sore note of saying you can't buy this putter, it is priceless, there's no point in even you trying, I thought there was another way we could go about this and then I realised Titleist themselves or Scotty Cameron have come out with their 2020 special select putter range which is as close as I can possibly find to the exact make or model or you could design the exact make or model to what McElroy was using at the time. Now these putters aren't cheap, they're nowhere near as cheap as the rest of the bag, even to the point that they're more expensive than the whole rest of the bag combined. But if you did want to get as something as similar to what McElroy was using at the time of his win at the US Open, this is probably the closest thing as you'll ever get to without spending fifteen to twenty thousand dollars on one putter. Eight hundred and sixty-five pounds is the total, as close as the total I can get to a complete replica of McElroy's bag. If you were to buy his clubs in today's market, over a third of that was for his putter, and to be honest, the replica putter would probably feel and sound nothing like what he used on the day. However, timeless classic and a great win for the 22 year old. Guys, thank you ever so much for watching.